Hello, everybody. You are listening to Feed Your Mind, and today we will discuss the connection between the Antarctic Treaty and NASA. This discussion will cover Admiral Byrd and his Operation High Jump and his deep freeze missions in Antarctica. So to begin our research, let's start with Admiral Byrd. And so it turns out this guy, he was reported to be a Freemason. And so before Admiral Byrd went to Antarctica for the first time, he was said to have gone to the North Pole. But that has been disputed because there's many claims that he never actually made it to the North Pole. Apparently, he was basing his claim off of his airplane speed and many other crude factors. So there was no real confirmation that he ever made it to the North Pole. Plus, his partner, whose name was Bennett, was said to have even confessed that they never made it to the North Pole. And so with the sketchy claim and plus his Freemason affiliation, that shows us that we might not be able to trust everything he was saying. But let's continue our research into what Byrd discovered down in Antarctica. And so the first real documented reports of anyone making it to Antarctica was in 1839, where a Navy mission had reported that they made it to Antarctica. But it wasn't until 1929 that it appears that Antarctica was receiving any type of actual exploration. And so you would have almost thought that all of the continents on this earth would have been claimed and controlled by governments by 1929, but... It really seems like no one had ever really bothered really looking into Antarctica until around 1929 when America started sending Bird down there. And so in 1929, Bird started setting up bases and then he did that all the way up until around 1940. So he just kept going back down there and setting up camps. They called these camps like Little America and all types of other names. And this was to establish a permanent presence in Antarctica in order to prepare for deeper exploration of Antarctica through Project High Jump and Operation Deep Freeze, where I believe their goal was to see if there was actually an edge of the Earth. I believe a small circle of people actually understood about the flat Earth possibility. And so I believe these missions were to confirm whether or not The greatest secret of all was true or not. And that greatest secret was whether or not the earth was flat. Because only the few within a small circle of the free Masonic community actually understood that the earth was always said to be flat with a dome firmament. And so around 1946, they were ready for Operation High Jump. And this was supposed to be a mission that was going to last about eight months or so. But the mission only ended up lasting about five months. Because during Operation High Jump, there has been reports of planes crashing into an invisible shield. And this invisible shield was blamed on advanced German technology. Others blame these plane crashes on blizzards. But I highly suspect that what these planes were crashing into was the dome firmament of the flat earth. That was the invisible shield that these planes were crashing into. It even sounded like Admiral Byrd at first thought these planes were being shot down because he released a statement after Operation High Jump and was warning the U.S. that there was hostile forces in Antarctica. And so there's no way that they would let Admiral Byrd say that planes were crashing into invisible shields. And so his official statement was that there was hostile forces down there. And so Byrd warned that the U.S. should protect itself against a possible invasion from the polar regions. And so after that, about seven to eight years later, Admiral Byrd was sent back down there for the deep freeze missions. And so pretty much any mission that deals with Antarctica after Operation High Jump was called deep freeze and there was several deep freeze missions but the first missions were somewhere around 1955 to 1958 so basically it sounds like this deep freeze mission was to establish a permanent presence in antarctica and so after all of these discoveries admiral bird was becoming quite famous and he began doing interviews and and he was discussing a little bit too much information i believe about antarctica so it doesn't surprise me that right after all of these discoveries admiral bird happens to die And this was March 11th of 1957. Admiral Byrd died. He died at the age of 68. Now, even though nobody owns Antarctica, which is one of the strangest things ever, there's no country on this earth that isn't being run. So Antarctica just seems to be this new continent that popped up out of nowhere in the early 1900s to be explored for the first time. And so this deep freeze mission was actually part of an international interest in Antarctica because there was this group called the IGY, which stands for the International Geophysical Year, and it was a collab effort between 40 nations. And so immediately after the deep freeze, when all of the countries went down there, they ended up signing a treaty. 
And this treaty was to forbid any free exploration of Antarctica. Right on to this day, no one can go down there freely and explore the Antarctic area without supervision. And so this Antarctic treaty has grown to 53 countries who have signed it. And the treaty vows to keep Antarctica an exclusive place for scientific and peaceful purposes only. It is forbidden to have any military nature in the area. No acts of hostility whatsoever. But that statement is kind of contradictory because it does allow for military personnel and equipment. And so on the flat earth, Antarctica is the outer ring, which would mean that it's much more massive than what we have been previously told. And so with 53 countries, they could easily surround the entire Antarctic area. So And so that's basically what it said they did because all of these 53 countries claim portions of Antarctica as their national territory. And so this Antarctic Treaty was signed December 1st of 1959. And so ever since 1959, with all of the bickering and back and forth threats going on between countries, these are the same countries that have an agreement that they have cooperated on since 1959. So, and so behind the scenes, all of these countries have what appears to be a common understanding amongst each other that no matter what's going on with wars between countries, these are the same countries that are respecting this agreement that pretty much forbids any free travel to Antarctica ever. But it's not just the Antarctic Treaty that happened after Admiral Byrd's discovery. Just about five months before the Antarctic Treaty was signed, NASA was formed out of all things. And so it's pretty obvious that something was found in Antarctica with the timing of everything, with NASA being formed just months before the Antarctic Treaty. It seems like it's a connected thing because if Admiral Byrd found the dome firmament in Antarctica, the governments knew that they had to form a program that was designed to keep anyone from discovering the dome ceiling of the flat earth. And then the Antarctic Treaty was designed to keep people from discovering the outer ring of the flat earth. And so with the timing of how NASA formed right before the Antarctic Treaty, which was right after Admiral Byrd died, which was right before his strange missions in Antarctica, it was all within the same chronological time frame that this all took place. And so when you look at the timeline of it all, it really starts to connect a lot of dots. And you can see how it is pretty clear that the flat earth dome firmament is being hidden from you. And so check out my Edge playlist to learn much more about this particular subject. This playlist will take you step by step in chronological order through all of the details about how the Flat Earth Dome Firmament was discovered and covered up. I'll leave a link in the comment section and the description box. And so let me know what you think about the timeline of all of this information. Does it really seem to put together the picture that Admiral Byrd found the Dome Firmament of the Flat Earth? Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you value my videos and want to help me get to a point where I can put out more content and also get the 24-hour channel going, you can support my work at patreon.com slash feedyourmind. Enjoy my Patreon page for as little as $1. I have all types of free gifts. I'll leave a link in the comment section in the description box. Don't forget to click the notification bell. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. This has been another episode of Feed Your Mind. Thank you for tuning in. Signing off.